Hey folks, Dave here with another quick model making tip from Thunder Mesa Studio. Let's talk about dry transfer decals. It's a very handy item from the Model Makers Toolkit, uh, one that I'm sure a lot of you have used with varying degrees of success. Now, I was trained as a graphic artist many, many years ago, uh, back in the dark ages of the early 1980s. And back in those days, there was a product called Letraset, Letraset lettering. I, I don't know if Letraset invented dry transfer decals, but um, they were the number one supplier. Chart Pack did them too, but Letraset was the main supplier. They're no longer in business. You can sometimes find old Letraset sets of letters, alphabets, numbers, things like that, fonts, we call them these days, um, on eBay and Etsy and places like that, but they're no longer made. Anyway, long story short, uh, you know, they were used for uh, 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 signs and product comps and sometimes paste-ups and things like that uh, for print uh, by graphic artists. But they were discovered by model builders, model makers. Um, and you could use them to letter freight cars, for example, and things like that, if you, if you know how to do it. That idea was picked up by a company we all know and love called Woodland Scenics. And they have been offering dry transfer numbers and decals and letters for years um, in varying colors and uh, usually a couple of different fonts. Um, but today I want to show you my methods for applying these Woodland Scenics dry transfer decals uh, to a piece of rolling stock. Um, they, they can be challenging to use, just like any kind of decal, they can be challenging to use. Water slide decals have their own uh, challenges and, and uh, uh, techniques that you need to know to use those successfully, and dry transfer decals do as well. So let's jump right in. Now my goal today is to add the number 92 to the side of this caboose. And this is a wooden model. It's already been painted and weathered. And it doesn't have a perfectly smooth, shiny surface, which makes it ideal for dry transfer uh, lettering as opposed to a water slide decal. Water slide decals, you usually need a smooth, glossy surface to apply them successfully to. And I could, you know, put a gloss coat on this and then go back and... Uh, you know, re <laughs> re dull it down and re weather it and all that. But hey, it's going to be a lot easier to put on some dry transfer decals. So I've got a, a set of um, railroad Roman numerals in white here from Woodland Phoenix, and I'll pull those out. And most of you are familiar with these. You know, they've got the instructions on the back here. It tells you to rub over the decal, and then you go back with the uh, this. Uh, kind of tracing paper and go over it again. And that's that's basically all there is to it. Uh, but the devil is in the details. Um, getting them lined up properly and uh, getting them straight uh, is, is a real challenge. So I want my lettering to be about, or my numbers, to be about two scale feet up from the bottom of the car right about here. So I'm going to make a very light pencil mark right there. That's all I'm going to do. Now, on the instructions for the uh, these dry transfers, it tells you to just lay the sheet on there and, and, and you know, rub them on. Um, that'll work if the thing you're working on is completely flat. But if it's three-dimensional like this, you're going to run into problems. You're going to run into uh, things that you don't want to be transferred, being transferred onto their <laughs> numbers in odd places. So what I like to do, first and foremost, is cut the letters or the numbers out. And for that, I'm going to use a uh, hobby knife with a sharp. This is a brand new number 11 blade. And uh, very carefully cut these out. Fortunately, uh, since this is caboose number 92, there's already a 9 and a 2 right next to each other on the sheet in two places, so I don't have to line up those individual numbers. So I'm going to cut this like so, and it doesn't have to be too 
precise. Just make sure you get the whole thing in there. Pull this out. Now I'm going to take a piece of scotch transparent tape and put it right over the top of these numbers I just cut out. This makes it so much easier to align things uh, properly than trying to monkey around with that entire sheet. So now, I'm going to take and put that right about, move it over a little bit. I'm using the, uh, the wooden slats on the car as a guide as to where to put that. I'm going to live with that for a second. I'm not going to jump right in and start burnish, burnishing it on there. I want to just make sure that it's uh, in the right spot, right where I want it. I can measure. Yeah. Make sure that's straight and level. Pretty darn close. Now I can press down on the tape just a little bit. Don't want to press too hard. Now this tool right here <laughs> goes back to the Letraset days. This is called a burnisher. It even says Letraset on it. It was made by them. And I think I got this for a graphic design class a uh, hundred years ago. <laughs> and it's specifically made for dry transfer letters. But I haven't used this thing in years. Let's see if it still works. You just want to go over the letters. Make sure you go over the whole thing to get it to separate from the sheet. I think we've got adhesion. I'm going to find out here real quick. Nope. Okay, that's a bust. You know, I just wanted to try it out. Um, I can't really get it down in there. That's why I prefer to use actually a number two pencil, a soft lead pencil. Just go over this. Now I think we got it. Lift up carefully. There it is. Now the next step before we do anything else is to take this, um, this backing sheet, and it's kind of like wax paper. It's designed so the lettering won't stick to it. Put this down over the top of the lettering and go over it again. And eventually this paper will be completely covered with <laughs> pencil spots like this. Pencil rubbings. And that forces it down uh, into the cracks in between uh, the boards. There we go. Now, I'm going to take some uh, clear matte finish spray. You can use Tester's Dull Coat. I actually prefer the Rust-Oleum brand or Krylon. And I'm going to put a clear coat over the top of this. And that'll help uh, keep it on, help it adhere to the car better and keep it from uh, peeling off. Now, I don't want to get uh, matte spray on the, uh, on the glazing on the windows. So I've made a little mask here. That'll do it. Now before I flip the car over and do the other side, I want to make sure I get the next one in the same place, more or less. One uh, great thing about uh, model railroad cars is it's impossible to look at both sides at the same time. So pro tip, <laughs> if you don't get them lined up exactly perfectly, no one but you will ever know. All right, so, but I'm going to try one, two, three, four. And then we got, uh, let's see, 9 sixteenths from the bottom. Okay, flip that over. And again, a tiny little pencil mark, which will disappear completely into the weathering. In fact, sometimes I make it so light that I can never find it again. Now, try to position this one pretty much the same way. And notice I just stuck down one corner there of the tape. I can then try and position this as straight as I can. 
Now we learned that the, the burnisher doesn't work. You know, I think I remember this uh, <laughs> from the old days that uh, I've, I've been carrying this tool around for quite a while and uh, never really liked it very much. Pencil works better. And I go back the other way, see? Let's see how we did on this side. Always the moment of truth. Oh no. So I don't lift it up all at once. Just lift up a little bit. So if part of it didn't adhere, you can go back. Ah, we got it. Well, that was touch and go. Now I'll get some spray on this side. Okay, and then you can go back with your favorite uh, weathering powders or chalks and uh, blend the decal into the car a little better. I try to mix a color that matches the, the car itself. Here's another cool trick you can do. Take a little bit of white chalk or powder and you can run it down like that. Looks like the, uh, the paint has uh, run a little bit. Yeah, you just want to uh, gray this back a little bit so it doesn't look so shiny and new. Okay. I think that's ready to go back to work on the layout. So just another word or two on this uh, dry transfer lettering. Um, uh, there, there is a lifespan on these. Uh, they don't last forever. Uh, once the package has been opened, after a few years, they're going to kind of dry out and lose their adhesion. They're not going to stick to stuff. They're going to get crumbly. Uh, I actually have some up here on the shelf that are probably over 20 years old. And the amazing thing is the package hasn't changed. They look exactly the same. Uh, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? But, you know, they don't work anymore. Um, so I should probably throw them away. And you should too. If you've got an old set that's been on the shelf for, you know, in a drawer for 20 years, they're not going to work anymore. You're, you're going to get disappointing results. The ones I just used, these are brand new. And um, yeah, just uh, beware that they don't last forever. And with that, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, for this little quick model making tip. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you enjoy this kind of content and would like to see more, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, or you could do what these nice folks did and head on over to patreon.com slash Thunder Mesa and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, everybody, and adios for now.